Hi, good luck everyone. Richard Wong here. So Panasonic has just announced their new um, Lumix G9 mirrors camera. So this is their new flagship camera um, specially designed for uh, photographers. Um, the other flagship camera they have is the GH5, which is um, designed for videographer or hybrid shooter that shoot both um, photo and video. So I just happened to have a G9 in my camera bag so let me quickly share with you some of the new feature changes and what um, I think about this camera. So the G9 maintained its uh, DSLR style body just like its uh, predecessors uh, and it is um, dust proof, um, splash proof and also freeze proof down to negative 10 degrees Celsius. Um, it has a magnesium alloy body so it should be very very tough. Um, the size of the body uh, has grown up quite a bit compared to the uh, G85 and other previous G series camera. Uh, it's somewhere, it's very similar to GH5 but, but somewhere a little bit smaller. So it's somewhere between the G85 and GH5 in terms of size and weight. Uh, in terms of the body design, it's, um, it's a little bit similar to the GH5 but if you look closely then you will notice a lot of difference. So the first thing um, you'll probably notice is that there's a large LCD screen at the top of the camera. Uh, Panasonic called it the status LCD screen. Um, I believe this is the first Panasonic camera, um, the first Panasonic microphone camera that has this um, top LCD screen. Uh, if you're someone who like to always um, check and tweak um, the camera setting, um, then the top LCD is definitely a much easier, quicker way for you to check the setting compared to the, um, the LCD at the back. So the next thing you notice is that the power switch um, has now been moved to um, as part of like the shutter button. So it's right here. Um, so personally, I think this is probably the best position for the um, the power switch because um, you pick up the camera and then your finger will be right here. So you can turn on the camera quickly and turn off the camera immediately um, when you finish um, your shot. Um, and um, if you look at it here, the power switch, not sure if you focus it, um, is also a light switch. So if you flick it this way, then the LCD screen will light up. So this is definitely very handy when you are shooting at, at, um, at night. Um, now, because of the um, large LCD here, so there's no room for uh, Panasonic to put another um, mode down that they usually place it around here. So what they did is that um, they merged this um, mode down with the normal down on the left side and it become like a, like a double decker kind of dial. So um, at the top of the dial, you have those um, usual mode dial thing, you know, the um, the menu mode, um, aperture priority, shutter priority, etc. Um, there's a lock there that you can use to lock it or unlock it so you can move quickly just like um, other Panasonic camera. And then on the bottom deck, bottom layer, uh, you have this new um, switch. Um, that you can choose between like a single shot, um, two of the burst mode, I'll talk about different burst mode a bit later, um, and oh, what are they? Oh, the 6K, 4K uh, photo mode, um, the post focus mode, um, the timer, and then the time lapse mode. So personally, I really like this um, design because um, it's very easy to use, um, and you can control a lot of different settings easily just from this um, double double decker dial. Now um, at the front of the camera, um, on this side you see there are now two. Let's see if you can see it. There are two um, customizable um, buttons for you to um, control different settings that you want to control. And on the other side, there is a new um, front lever, um, which is also customizable. So you can um, assign one of the function. Um, that you want to um, control using this lever. So for example, you can um, assign it to image stabilization. So um, you can flick it between like say, um, w um, the normal uh, image stabilizer or the panning mode, um, or you can use it to control say, um, one of the electronic shutter or the mechanical shutter, or um, you can use it to say, um, I want to shoot in color or monochrome. There are lots of settings you can um, choose for this uh, lever. 
Um, yeah, I, I think it's a very, very handy switch here because there are always like one or two settings that you always want to change and um, you don't want to um, go into the set setting menu. Yeah, this is a very easy way to um, for you to change it. So as you can see, the camera has a pretty big um, and deep grip. Um, the, it's very comfortable when you're holding it like this. Um, even when I have that new um, Leica 200mm lens attached to it and um, walk around for a long, long time and I, my hands doesn't really feel sore um, at all because yeah, the, it's giving me very, very good support. And um, the rubber they put on outside um, has a slightly different texture compared to the GH5. The GH5 one feels more um, more rubber, rubber-ish. Yeah, while um, the G9 feels a bit more, um, how do you say, it's, it's, um, it's a bit harder. The texture is a little bit harder. Um, can't really say I like um, this one or that one more because they just feel a bit different. Yeah, now talk about the difference between the G9 and the GH5. Um, the buttons feel quite different between the two camera. Um, with the GH5, when you press the buttons, it has a very... Um, like um, how do you say like a digital or like very short travel you click on it it just got a click immediately while with the G9 um, it's like it has quite a bit more um, travel than when you press the button and it for feel more um, rubber rubbery after using it for two weeks and also switching back and forth between the two camera, I would say I definitely prefer the, the feeling uh, when pressing the buttons on the G9. It just feel better to me. Now you can find the microphone, um, the what's it, the headphone, HDMI and USB port um, on this side um, of the camera. And then next to it, you have the um, the Tilti Swifty screen at the back. Um, the size is 3 inch which is the same as the G85, but it's a little bit smaller than G5, which has the 3.2 inch LCD screen. The LCD screen is um, touch screen as usual, and uh, Panasonic's uh, touch screen um, implementation is probably the best in the um, industry. Now, just like the previous G series camera, um, the G9 also has a built-in um, electronic viewfinder at the back. And the resolution of the electronic viewfinder is uh, 3.68 million dots, which is exactly the same as the one um, on the GH5, and uh, quite a bit higher than the uh, what's that? The GH5 has the 2.3 million dots. So yeah, the, it's it's quite a bit higher and very high resolution actually. Now one thing that is better than the GH5 is the GH5. The electronic viewfinder has the magnification of uh, 0.76, I believe, uh, which is already quite big. It's like almost the biggest um, um, electronic viewfinder. Um, but with the G9, they have increased the magnification now to 0 0.83 times. So that makes it um, simply the biggest electronic viewfinder. Um, in the market like it's bigger than any other mirrors camera um, and it's also bigger than the um, the flagship DSLR from Nikon and Canon so yeah using it is just very very present to use so it, because it's so big and um, also very high resolution and also they have um, increased the refresh rate from uh, 60 Hertz to now uh, 120 Hertz um, so the, it's super super smooth um, you would definitely notice it um, the difference between the 120 hertz and the 60 hertz when you uh, when your camera is panning or when you are shooting something that's moving, um, the 120 hertz um, refresh rate gives you a much smoother image, um, almost like you are looking through um, the you're looking the through your your uh, optical viewfinder. Now the eye point of the electronic viewfinder is approximately 21 millimeter, which means it's very good uh, for people wearing um, glasses when they are shooting. But probably because the um, the viewfinder is so big, because when I'm looking through it, I don't wear glasses when I'm taking photos. Um, but for me, I'm like struggling. Like I just barely can see um, the the whole electronic viewfinder image. It's like the, it's so big that it's just my eye is like can just only manage to see it from edge to edge. Now um, probably because of that, and for people that's wearing glasses, um, so it would be a little bit hard to see um, from edge to edge. So I think because of this reason, um, 
Panasonic has um, added a um, free mode button here, um, which would shrink the electronic viewfinder from 0 0.83 to 0 0.77 or even to 0 0.7 times. So make it smaller. So if you're wearing glasses, then you can now see edge to edge. So I think this is probably the first time that I see a manufacturer put a function there to reduce the uh, the size of the electronic viewfinder because um, normally they just want to make it bigger, bigger, bigger. But this time, because it's so big that they have to think about people that um, yeah, that may may not be able to see um, the whole um, screen, so they put a function there to um, make it um, smaller. So now, because of the huge um, electronic viewfinder, they fit in here. There's no room for a built-in flash, so yeah, the camera doesn't have any built-in flash, and it doesn't come with any um, the, those you know small clip-on one as well. So um, uh, personally, uh, with my G eighty five which has a built-in flash. I never use the built-in flash, so um, G9 doesn't have a built-in flash, probably doesn't really bother me much, but I know other people do really love the built-in flash because it, it is it is um, quite handy um, sometimes when you need a bit of fuel flash or it is really, really dark. So yeah, um, I guess if it's a bit of trade-off. Um, personally, I will definitely prefer to have a bigger electronic wheel finder. You know, when I pick up a new camera, there's one thing that um, I do, normally do, um, to quickly determine how good or bad the maintenance system is designed is that I try to find out how do you uh, format the memory card. Yeah, some manufacturer, they put the format um, menu like in some really weird place, like in the middle of a deep uh, menu <laughs> um, tree, so it's very hard to find it. Even if you know where it is, you still have to go through and care carefully find it. So um, if a camera manufacturer do that, for me, that's uh, definitely not good. The G9 doesn't have this kind of problem at all. So overall, um, I really like the ergonomic and the body design of the G9, um, apart from two little things. Um, the first thing is the shutter button, for some reason, um, it's very easy for me to um, trigger the shutter um, while I don't actually want to, while I actually just want to half click it, but end up took a photo. Um, at first, I thought maybe it's just because I'm not used to the uh, camera, but after using it for two weeks, it still happened to me. Um, maybe less frequently, but it still happened to me. Um, so I'm not too sure why I said, um, but having said that, Remember, this is a pre-production uh, camera with the pre-production firmware, so um, maybe this is something that won't um, exist in the final retail version. So yeah, I would definitely try to um, try out the retail uh, version uh, once it's available here in New Zealand um, and uh, see if the retail version have the same issue or not. Um, yeah, and I'll be updating the review on my blog so now, the second thing I don't really like um, is that um, with the mirrorless camera, so one of the biggest advantages is that you can shoot photo using the either the LCD screen or the electronic viewfinder, and then with that you have the advantage of you can preview the exposure and everything um, instantly when you are like um, composing the photo. That means um, quite often I would notice the exposure is like a little bit under or a little bit over or, or something like that. And I would um, quite often want to adjust the apply a bit of exposure compensation to make the um, exposure as good as possible um, straight out of the camera. And that means the exposure compensation button is one of the buttons that I press the most. Um, and if you can see how I hold the camera, normally I would put the finger like this to um, for me to adjust the exposure compensation I have to put my finger like here which is probably not the most natural position for my finger um, to um, press the button I would really prefer if they swap the white balance and the um, exposure compensation button because white balance is something that I find I really rarely need to adjust because the auto white balance is so good um, with this camera. Um, but the exposure compensation, I always have to um, plus or minus a little bit. Nothing too bad, but um, yeah, you know, one third or half stop is quite often that I need to adjust. Um, so um, yeah, I would definitely prefer if they do swap these two. 
but this is my personal um, opinion so um, maybe if you can leave a comment below and tell me what you think um, do you agree with me or do you disagree with me um, I'm quite curious to um, hear about what you guys think now the camera also has a Bluetooth uh, 4.2 and uh, Wi-Fi which is 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz one um, just for easier um, remote control and also uh, sharing photos now um, look at this side of the camera the G9 just like the GH5 has um, two uh, SD card slot and they are both UHS 2 which is the high speed uh, memory card slot now for most of the camera in the market that has the two memory card slot um, a lot of them they actually only have one high speed memory card slot and the other one is the slow speed one so this is purely a cost saving reason that they put only one fast and one slow one in this is actually not good at all if you um, want to save to both card because that means um, if you want to save two copy of the raw file for example um, the, it will be slowed down by, by the slower uh, card slot or if you like use it as an overflow so when you free up the first card then you will start um, saving to the second card that means if you do that once you free up the first card then the saving speed will be much slower then you have to keep an eye on it when that happens you have to stop shooting and then you have to swap the card so put the put the second card to the first slot and things like that so like the, it, it just make it um, you need to have a lot more pre planning um, and just think of, oh maybe I don't want to save raw to bow I save JPEG to the second slot to uh, make sure it doesn't slow down a lot so this kind of thing just make um, especially if you are a uh, professional photographer it just not a good thing because it just make your job harder to do um, so it's very good to see Panasonic they put um, two fast slot in this camera even though this camera is a lot cheaper than um, a lot of other dual card slot camera in the market now the G9 uses a 20 megapixel uh, micro four thirds sensor um, which is the same resolution as the GH5 um, the sensor has no anti-aliasing filter um, to give you um, better sharpness so Panasonic said they have put a new AR coating on the sensor to reduce goals and fairing um, they have also increased the um, dynamic range by 25% um, but when I'm shooting this video I don't have the raw reader for um, the G9 yet so I can't really do much um, analysis of the raw output to see um, how much improvement it actually is in real world um, but yeah once I got my hands on the raw reader I will be um, updating my blog and do a bit more uh, analysis of the image from the G9 now one new feature um, that comes with the G9 is that it has a high resolution mode which gives you 80.5 megapixel um, output image which can be uh, raw or JPEG so basically the camera just take eight photos very quickly and it just shift the sensor just a tiny bit um, so um, then the camera can merge um, all the eight photos together and generate the high resolution um, output um, in camera so you don't need external software to generate the high resolution output so I'm not over excited about this uh, high resolution output uh, because there are quite a few limitations when you are shooting in high resolution mode uh, first thing is you pretty much have to put it on a tripod or something really solid even if your camera move a tiny bit um, the output um, would not be sharp um, and the second thing is you have to pretty much shoot a very static scene um, if anything moves even a tiny bit then you will see um, the blur a bit of ghost uh, in your final merge photo um, having said that the uh, Panasonic implementation of this one is pretty neat as I said before it can um, generate it um, within the camera you don't need to use external software um, and it can generate raw file as well and the image quality does improve quite a bit like it noticeably gives you a lot more detail compared to the normal 20 megapixel shot so yeah it's good but it's not like a, a magic feature uh, it does have its uh, limitations and I heard quite a few people actually even though they like the Panasonic camera they end up buying another brand because the other brand has this feature but the Panasonic doesn't have so now it's good to see uh, Panasonic has this feature 
Um, so the camera has um, a mechanical and electronic shutter. The mechanical shutter, the maximum um, shutter speed is one eight thousand second, which is very very good. Uh, if that's not fast enough, then you can switch to electronic um, shutter, which has the maximum speed of um, double that, which is just 16,000 16, second, which is super fast. Now recently, there seems to be like a bit of race, like. Uh, between the different manufacturer to see who can create a camera that can do the highest fastest um, burst speed so now with the G9 um, with the mechanical shutter um, and continuous focusing uh, you can shot at 9 frames per second which is not bad at all um, at full resolution and raw file and everything and if you don't need um, autofocus then you can shoot at 12 frames per second with the mechanical shutter that is very very fast now let me show you what the shutter sounds like when I'm shooting at 12 frames per second. And the camera also has a pretty big buffer. You can shot at least 50 to 60 raw file. And once it fills a buffer, because it has the fast um, UHS-2 card slot, and if you have a fast card, then it will uh, clear the buffer very quickly. So let's see how long does it take to um, to fill up the buffer and, and then you can see how fast it can um, clean the buffer so let's see if you can see the um, yeah you can see the count okay Okay, and now you can see it's writing, oops, it's writing very fast to the card. Yeah, it doesn't take very long to um, completely um, empty the buffer. So if that's still not fast enough, then you can switch to the um, electronic shutter and then you can shot at 20 frames per second with continuous focus and no blackout. Um, and if that's still not fast enough for you, um, you can switch to the single autofocus mode um, and then you can shot at 60 frames per second um, and you still have the no blackout um, and that's with the raw output. So that is super super fast. The no blackout is very useful, uh, especially when you are trying to follow the subject because basically it, it's just like your your um, electronic viewfinder or the LCD screen just look exactly like when you're not shooting so you can follow your um, object a lot easier and unlike other cameras um, it doesn't compromise the image output quality when you're shooting burst mode no matter you're shooting at 9 frames per second 12 frames per second um, 20 frames per second or 60 frames per second the output raw file is still exactly the same quality so that is very good so no cheating here from Panasonic so however, there's one thing that uh, I would love Panasonic implement is that they don't seem to allow you to um, change the uh, maximum burst speed um, to like a lower setting. So if you want to um, shoot in no blackout mode with the electronic shutter, then you have to shoot um, either at 60 frames per second or 20 frames per second with or without the um, continuous autofocus. So I can't like switch to a slightly lower burst speed, like 30 frames per second, I can't seem to do that. Um, so yeah, it'd be good if uh, Panasonic add this kind of option uh, in their future firmware. So another good thing about G9 is that um, if you manage to fill the buffer, um, the camera is still pretty much fully um, operational when it's trying to create a buffer. So all the managed system you can still use, um, you can still um, review your photo or video even though review loading the speed would be a lot slower because um, the camera is also <laughs> trying to write to the card so um, that's understandable um, and you can still shoot photo so yeah pretty much everything is still usable so the um, G9 also has the dual IS2 feature um, but this time Panasonic said it's not only using the gyro but it's also using the reading from the image sensor and also the accelerometer sensor so combined together they got an even better image stabilization um, result so I think the official figure is um, it's got 6.5 stop um, all the way up to 280mm um, there's a full frame equivalent focal length which is 140mm uh, um, micro forward um, focal length 
and I did some testing of uh, GNI's uh, image stabilization system uh, using the Leica 200mm f2.8, the new lens just released, um, and also Leica 225mm f1.4, which doesn't have an optical image st stabilizer built in, so it doesn't actually have the dual IS2. It's using just the body image stabilization. And um, I compared the result um, I got from the GH5 as well, did some side by side. Um, comparison. So what I found is comparing between the G9 and G5, the G9 um, it's got maybe around one stop better image stabilization um, result compared to the G5. So that is pretty impressive because G5 um, image stabilization is not bad at all. So yeah, both the GIS2, which means when I use it with the Leica lens, and uh, just the image, just the body image stabilization. Um, uh, both of them are around one stop plus or minus a bit um, compared to the GH5. So yeah, go to my blog and have a look because I have posted up the charts which um, summarize the results um, from the test um, I did with the G9 and the GH5. So the G9 using the BLF19F battery, which is the same one used on the GH4, GH5, um, that's a pretty big battery um, and the the um, battery life is pretty good. Um, I can easily it can easily last whole day for me. The camera also has a power save LVF shooting mode, uh, which means um, as soon as your eye um, is away from the um, electronic viewfinder, and the camera will just go into a sleep mode um, pretty much in instantly. Um, and then you can wake it up by hard pressing the shutter button. So if you enable that mode, then the rated battery life is around 920 short compared to the normal, which is I think just around, just under 400 shots. But remember that 920 shot is the super rated standard. Um, if you are shooting in the burst mode with the um, the electronic. Uh, shutter as I did quite a bit when I was testing the camera um, you definitely can get a lot more uh, photo out of a, a single battery charge um, I managed to get a few thousand photo and uh, from a single battery and I still got plenty of battery left after that uh, few thousand photo so if you do shoot a lot of photos the um, USB port on the side of the camera can be used to either charge or um, provide power to the camera so this is not the first Panasonic camera that um, allow you to use the USB port for um, charging the battery, um, but it's a very, very handy feature because pretty much everyone carry a USB power bank with you and you have the USB charger in, in your car, um, on your desk and everywhere. So yeah, having USB charging is, I, I think it's like, it, it should be a must have feature for every camera in the market. The G9 uses the advanced DFD autofocus system. Uh, Panasonic say this is the fastest um, autofocus system um, in the industry. The autofocus speed is 0 0.04 second, which is um, a little bit faster than GH5, which is 0 0.05 second. Um, honestly, I can't tell the 0 0.01 uh, second difference between the G9 and GH5. I can only say both camera has a very very fast uh, autofocus speed and yes I feel this is probably marginally faster and I would also agree that this is the fastest um, autofocus system um, in any camera that I've ever used it's just ridiculously fast the autofocus system can also focus down to negative 4 EV so that means very very dark um, places it can still autofocus quite nice, but of course the autofocus speed would drop quite a bit um, when you are autofocusing in a dark area. So the previous um, Panasonic camera already have the head and eye um, autofocus tracking mode, and now they have a body um, tracking mode. So basically, when the camera managed to detect a person's body uh, in the frame, then it will draw a rectangle box um, it's like a bonding box um, surrounding the person so yeah you can see which um, person is now tracking um, it works reasonably well it's not perfect because sometimes the tracking would not work quite well for no obvious reason um, but overall it's still pretty good and it is a very handy feature um, because that means when you are shooting uh, say events or things like that uh, when you when the subject you are shooting, um, it change from like a close up to a full body shot, then you don't really need to change the autofocus setting um, at all. 
um, the camera would manage to just follow the person and keep tracking it. So yeah, very handy feature. Compared to some other camera that using uh, face detection autofocus system, um, I feel the G9 is uh, a little bit not as um, reliable um, when it comes to focus tracking. Having said that, the camera does come with like four different presets uh, for you to fine tune the autofocus tracking uh, performance. And um, if you play around with it a little bit um, and fine tune your setting, um, the autofocus tracking result is actually um, pretty decent. So Panasonic say very clearly the G9 is designed for uh, photographers um, while the GH5 is designed for videographer or hybrid shooter. So what it means is missing some of the pro video feature um, that is available on the GH5. Um, for example, you don't have the 10-bit 422 um, output, um, you don't have the um, V-Log profile, um, you don't have a waveform display and some other things like that. But having said that, if you look at what um, G9 can do when it comes to video, it's actually not bad at all. Uh, I would say it's better than most other camera in the market, even some of them are like um, designed for hybrid shooter as well. The camera can shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second. So not many camera in the market can do it. Uh, a lot of camera at twice the price still can't do 4K at 60 frames per second. So that is very nice that uh, Panasonic still uh, leave this feature in this camera. However, uh, when you're shooting at uh, 4K at 60 frames per second, uh, each video has a 10 minute uh, maximum length limit. Um, the GH5 doesn't have this limit. So the camera still has the Cine like um, DV profile. Uh, as I said before, it has the um, headphone jack, mic jack, um, HDMI output, and of course it has the Zebra and Peking and those kind of um, feature that we expect on a Panasonic camera. And if you like to shoot a slow motion video, the cameras can also do a 180 frame per second um, Full HD video. That is very nice that Panasonic didn't remove this feature from this camera. And the dual IS works very well uh, when you are shooting video. When I was testing the GH5, I was really impressed by um, GH5 uh, dual IS2 uh, performance when shooting video. Um, and the G9 X has exactly the same, maybe slightly better because they improved the image um, stabilizer system. So yeah, um, the video footage shot uh, with the dual IS uh, is very, very smooth. If you are someone like me who want to have a nice high quality video but you don't really need some of the pro feature, then the G9 is pretty much the same as the GH5. And no matter whether you're shooting 4K or 1080p video, um, the camera would do a uh, full sensor readout and then downscale the, um, the image to, um, to a 4K or 1080p um, output video. So the video is very, very nice uh, with lots of detail. Um, definitely the, one of the best, if not the best uh, video quality from a camera in this price range. As I said, uh, I've been using this camera for about two weeks now. And to be honest, I'm still learning um, something new about this camera every single day. Um, there are just so many new feature changes to this camera that it just um, takes me a lot of time to figure out them all and try it out um, yeah, and use it. So yeah, I will be updating my blog review um, regularly um, in the next few weeks um, just um, as I figure out and use the camera a bit more. So if you are a micro four first shooter, you may think that, um, well, if I want the best video camera, then I buy a Panasonic. If I want the best photo shooter, then I buy an Olympus. Um, this is slightly unfair to a Panasonic because if you look at the GH5, it's actually a very capable um, photo shooter with a lot of very high end um, feature and the photo quality output is actually pretty good. But probably because its video is so strong, um, people just forgot about the fact that it can actually take some nice photo. And with the G9, it's definitely the best uh, photographic uh, camera from Panasonic. Um, it's definitely better than the GSA, um, G85, and even compared to the G5, there's so many improvement um, and new feature that the G5 doesn't have. So yeah, it's um, if you're still shooter, um, then definitely this is the best camera for you. And the price of the G9 is also um, in here in New Zealand is about $500 cheaper than the um, G5. So overall that makes the G9 a very attractive option for a micro user um, who mainly shoot photos. 
So I'll be keep testing this camera and using it in real world every more in the next couple of weeks and I'll be keep updating my blog review. If you have any question about this camera, please uh, feel free to leave a message below. I'll try to answer all your questions. Um, and I also upload the uh, new Leica 200 f 2.8 uh, lens review on my YouTube channel and my blog as well. That is a very very nice uh, telephoto lens. So yeah, go check out the review as well. Um, yeah, I hope you like this review. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and like this video as well. Um, thanks for watching this video and I will see you next time. Good luck everyone.